Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my friend and mentor, Joseph Lubin, founder of Consensus. When, uh, when Tim and I discussed TruffleCon and uh, when he asked me uh, uh, to come and speak, um, sort of noodled a little bit and decided it might be interesting to see uh, a bit of the, the history of uh, Ethereum, the history of consensus. Uh, and so I'm going to run through a sort of quick uh, set of pictures. Uh, and uh, essentially, it's it's the story of needs being identified and needs being met. And uh, I think we'll see that uh, uh, ramify uh, uh, quite a lot in the future and uh, it should hopefully be uh, uh, entertaining uh, to watch where all this came from. Uh, so um, for some number of decades, um, many people, uh, many observers have been watching uh, the financial world, the economic world. Uh, a set of observers named Satoshi Nakamoto uh, felt that uh, centralized top-down command and control as a paradigm might be getting a little bit old. Um, Satoshi Nakamoto felt that uh, monetary systems might be moving towards end of life. And so uh, it wasn't the first cryptocurrency. There were centralized cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin was invented uh, to essentially uh, address those sets of concerns, those sets of needs um, in our society uh, for um, better infrastructure. And so Satoshi really invented three things. One was the uh, decentralized uh, crypto value token, the Bitcoin. Um, and as you all know, um, blockchain was uh, another major breakthrough and crypto economics married uh, the two together and uh, essentially create a created a paradigm where uh, people could uh, share their resources, validate transactions on a network, and, and secure that network. Um, so a few years into it, um, it became clear that, uh, that we had another need, uh, and that other need was to take this, this new uh, trust machine, this new platform that would enable us to, without centralized control, to build shared trustworthy infrastructure, uh, we needed to bring it to the masses. We needed to uh, enable virtually every application uh, to be able to make use of this sort of uh, uh, trust infrastructure. So there were many projects that, uh, that took a whack at it, but all of them involved protocol priests uh, building opcodes in at the protocol level or, or some things in it at the, uh, the client level. Um, and that wasn't scalable in terms of human action. What we needed was clean separation of the protocol layer, um, a computationally complete node at, at, every, uh, at every node of a, a blockchain network, um, and uh, um, an application layer that could be used and understood by millions of software developers around the world and, um, and developer tools that, uh, that they could recognize and, and use. Uh, so a year into it, uh, uh, or sorry, um, let's move on a little bit. So we, in the first year, we sort of traveled around and tried to share this message. Uh, lots of people were developing code. Um, we figured out how to legally run a token launch. Uh, a year into it, uh, it was getting close to releasing um, the uh, version one of the system. So this is. Uh, in Berlin at uh, the dev office uh, where we thought we were getting very, very close to releasing the platform. Um, and at this point, I started, uh, or I guess we all started to realize that uh, okay, we're putting this platform out into the world, but there really weren't a lot of people uh, building software or the application later for it. And, um, thought that, uh, that we were going to release it very soon, we better get hopping, so I started a company called Consensus and started hiring a few people. Uh, it turns out it was uh, um, about six or seven months after that particular picture that we actually did get the launch done. Um, one of the first people um, that was hired uh, was this gentleman, Christian Lundquist. Uh, he, uh, strong tech background, mathematician, uh, he started uh, 
um, building a project called uh, Balance Free. Um, and some more pictures of our second office. Uh, so it's Michael Golden, Jesse. Um, and fast forward to um, the actual launch. Uh, so we were actually in our second office in Brooklyn, uh, Don Tapscott and Alex Tapscott, who you may be aware of, uh, joined us on that day. It was uh, uh, tremendous storms, uh, unbelievable lightning and thunder, and uh, we watched fstats.net as, uh, as the network essentially uh, organized itself um, into life. Um, so first, first hackathon. Um, back then, we were thinking about uh, mining as well. I think this was, I believe, before um, we, uh, before mainnet was live. Uh, there was a, a concern that uh, some of the university um, compute centers with 70,000 GPUs would um, be overtaken at night. And, Grad students would uh, would mine blocks. Where there was one big concern um, where uh, uh, this group was going to commandeer a, a really big installation and mine selfishly, uh, so uh, empty blocks. And uh, uh, so a few of us got together and we um, bought. We did a bunch of uh, analyses of the different cards and tried to figure out the best architecture and uh, uh, put together a little installation. Uh, not, Incredibly far from here, actually, um, just to make sure that we could get one block every now and then and keep the network running. Um, so, yeah, more in intern hackathon. Uh, this is Michael Golden. He's gone on to, to build uh, Ad Chain and Pioneer this notion of a token curated registry. Um, so, doing some tremendous work on that front. It was grueling back then. Um, <laughs> we, uh, uh, if you think life is, is very dense uh, now, it, uh, I think it was probably, I don't know, 50 times less dense back then, but uh, uh, it still felt pretty overwhelming. Uh, so again, Christian Lundquist building some of the core building blocks. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Light Wallet. Light Wallet was uh, his attempt to secure his own ether holdings. Uh, and again, uh, need uh, driving invention. Um, this particular uh, piece of software was used by uh, many different people. Um, there's a version uh, of it that uh, we put together uh, for uh, an exchange, a major exchange actually, and that, uh, that was one of their early pieces of infrastructure. Um, the balance system drove the need for, um, for developer tools, it drove the need for um, identity, drove the need for uh, securing assets, um, and it was one of the, the early systems that we were able to talk about, that we were able to show to different institutions. We have this story uh, about uh, being able to uh, apply graph theoretic tools uh, to analyzing the different flows in, in your value network and uh, um, uh, regulators and, uh, and other sorts of people. Um, I, I think we're captured by that story. Uh, Needs identified in the music industry. So uh, uh, Simon De La Ruvia, uh, again an incredibly early hire consensus. Um, he was uh, and is based in South Africa. And consensus really started as a a multinational startup because uh, there just weren't people uh, who understood this stuff. So we, we started very decentralized from the beginning. Um, he was a musician. He played around with the. Um, building software systems for the music industry and um, suddenly we had this um, this infrastructure, this trustworthy infrastructure uh, that could potentially reformat the music industry. Uh, so we put out uh, a call to arms, uh, described the music industry as broken, um, where we had these big intermediaries sucking up 70% of the value. Uh, would it be great if artists could establish their own identity? directly access their consumers, charge much less, receive much more, attach usage policies to their content uh, so that uh, other artists can create derivative works or acquire other sorts of licenses. And so um, our first experiment was uh, was with Imogen Heap. Uh, I can't see that very well. 
Um, but uh, Grammy Award winning artist, uh, she was thinking very similar things and we made a, a big splash uh, in the music world by uh, enabling her to put a song on the platform. You could buy the song, you could buy stems of the song, and uh, you could do whatever you wanted with them according to the license that you acquired. Uh, fast forward, um, Ujo um, creator platform is available. There are a few hundred artists uh, on the platform with content and uh, um, we believe it's starting to gain some traction. So it's on me now. So moving to a bigger space. Um, if uh, any of you have been to the office in, in Brooklyn, uh, you'll see that that door is now uh, covered with uh, lots of stickers, um, truffle stickers and many other blockchain projects. Uh, it's one of our early hackathons. Uh, and this is DevCon 1. So DevCon 1, almost didn't happen. Uh, DEF CON 1 uh, was cancelled and uh, uh, took uh, quite a lot of work to organize this in a very, very short period of time. I think we had about two months to get it done. It was, it was in London um, and it was, uh, I think, a, a catalyzing moment. Uh, the people who showed up there, and I think it, it ended up being around 700 people, um, were just astonished that, uh, that they were all finding each other and uh, um, that, that this was a thing. Um, one thing that was really remarkable, uh, which indicated that it was a, a developer community rather than a, a cryptocurrency community, is that by the fourth day, uh, suddenly everybody started to realize that we hadn't talked about the price of Ether once. So again, balance uh, was presented there. Uh, balance drove digital identity, uh, early explorations, um, it has turned into Uport, um, and uh, Uport is uh, it's a big team, um, a tremendous journey. Uh, they uh, started building something that we thought would be usable. Uh, it was going to be sort of expensive to establish your identity on the blockchain. Uh, since then, uh, the team has worked with Microsoft, the team has worked with many other companies in the space to create the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Uh, and to put together a decentralized identity spec. Uh, so it's very minimal um, and it enables people to establish the root of their identity on a blockchain and control it uh, from their side of the browser. Uh, that will be one of the uh, profound transformations that enables us to take the world from the Web 2.0 paradigm to the Web 3.0 paradigm, the decentralized world wide web. Um, Uport's also releasing uh, essentially a personal data locker, or released a personal data locker system. Um, it uh, will enable uh, public aspects of you to be exposed uh, if you wish them to be exposed. Um, and it will enable uh, other aspects of you to be shared. Um, and these can be encrypted, these can be granularly um, shared uh, with anyone you designate. Um, so you can upload um, financial information, health information into a personal data locker, um, and then you can give specific permissions. You can even have uh, uh, essentially uh, the settings of an application be fully under your control and the application developer um, essentially has to ask you for permission to access them. So while all this was happening, um, Behind the scenes, um, there was an individual who was, who was a main driver. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, I, again, uh, one of the one of the earliest people that we talked to. Um, uh, I believe he came to us through uh, through one of the people already at Consensus, and we got on a call, and uh, he was building this productivity application called. Cork board, cork me, or something like that. <laughs> um, later, later called Note App, I believe. Um, and um, we talked, he wanted to jump into the, uh, the blockchain space, and he was skeptical. Um, but we convinced him to join us uh, to build stuff. I wasn't clear what, what he was going to build, but a uh, uh, very talented software engineer, um, visionary. Um, and uh, 
he, he had a quite, he had a, a, a QA background, a very strong QA background. So uh, we thought that was uh, uh, a very important uh, quality uh, for a software engineer. Um, he had a, an earnestness about him. I think that's a great picture. <laughs> you, you want that in, in uh, the developer of your dev tool suite, don't you? Uh, so the first thing that, that Tim did uh, was build Dapp Store. Um, this is uh, part of a deck, a vision for Dapp Store, the Dapp Marketplace. It wasn't really, we weren't really intending so much to sell decentralized applications, but it would be uh, your way of organizing decentralized applications. Some people would sell or dev in in-app purchases or something like that. Um, so he built that, he did a beautiful job, um, uh, presented it at DevCon 1, um, which piled a bunch of our little applications into it. Um, but, and I remember Tim um, building different scripts. Uh, again, the, the theme is uh, at consensus, uh, at Ethereum, uh, we essentially identified needs uh, and we built based on those identified needs. And so that's really where Truffle came from. But it wasn't just a need, it was laziness. I remember Tim <laughs> saying uh, often that uh, he's building this because he's lazy. And you know, it's a, an elegant way of saying that uh, uh, he's trying to um, build efficient processes. So again, this, uh, uh, this lazy individual wasn't actually lazy. Um, this lazy individual um, built himself a vehicle to get him where he wanted to go, um, but far-sighted. Uh, he <laughs> built a vehicle to take us all where we wanted to go. <laughs> So these, yeah, uh, this is Truffle in four slides. This is an early presentation. It was actually just two slides because the other slides were this is a demo and the end. <laughs> uh, so Truffle was, uh, was presented early on and caught fire. Um, I don't have to go over the, the chocolatey goodness. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot about that today. Um, so consensus. Consensus is uh, is interested in building technology, enables the world to build better systems for itself. And we want to build some of those better systems ourselves because it's fun to build systems. Um, the thesis behind all of that is that uh, uh, decentralized architectures will enable us to build better systems, better systems that uh, serve people better. Um, and. Um, so Ethereum is uh, what we call a protocol-based open platform. Uh, so a, a, a platform for building decentralized applications. On Ethereum, you can build apps. Um, but on Ethereum, very interestingly, you can build more protocol-based open platforms. Uh, so uh, one thesis uh, is that um, the more we put out into the world, uh, the cheaper we make it, the more open we make it. Uh, the more we can all share. Um, and if we can build stacks and stacks of these uh, decentralized uh, protocol-based open platforms, uh, we can all uh, work together more collaboratively, we can all trust each other more because of the nature of the radically decentralized platform, um, and we can all build up layers and layers of value. Uh, so uh, at Consensus, we do a bunch of that. We um, we have a, a protocol for uh, legally enforceable blockchain-based agreements. Uh, if you look at the, the Ujo music platform, uh, it's currently an application, and this is a paradigm that we often use. We try to build something uh, and gain some traction for it, uh, but then separate the application layer uh, from the protocol layer, and uh, ideally put out the protocol for everybody to use as we and others uh, can then add more and more functionality. So you can imagine uh, in the music industry, we have a, a protocol meta layer that describes all the, the data um, in the industry. And we're doing the same thing in other aspects of, of the arts. Um, and uh, if you can push more and more useful um, structure down, uh, then um, 
can keep doing that. So one could imagine an adjacent music industry platform, uh, but then see a ticketing application uh, built on that. Uh, once the ticketing application gets a little bit of traction, they understand uh, what they needed to build, uh, then they can separate that application from a protocol layer uh, and essentially enable other ticketing applications to be built on top of that. Uh, so um, a few of these are, are following uh, that sort of pattern. Um, in these early stages uh, in the blockchain industry, uh, we're building lots of tools uh, that we can all use so that we can build lots more tools. So um, uh, standards like fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, mm -hmm. boundaries, Gitcoin, uh, atomic swap protocols like AirSwap and ZeroX, um, parameterized insurance products are, are coming very soon and protocols in which to trade those things. Um, people say that uh, there's not much going on in blockchain. Where, where are the applications? Where are the killer applications? Um, in this phase of, e of infrastructure building, um, there are hundreds uh, that, are, that are being built, uh, if not more. Um, so scalability, again, um, need, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, software engineers have been um, bumping up against scalability uh, forever uh, since, uh, since there was hardware. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, are moving from a world, uh, Web 2.0 world, uh, where I think we've outgrown the technology uh, in a sense. Um, we've built uh, amazing edifices that have uh, profoundly transformed society for the positive. Uh, but we built an internet, we built web protocols uh, that are missing things. They're missing digital scarcity, uh, so a native money, uh, and they are missing an identity construct. And uh, so uh, some corporations have defined identity uh, to serve their own business models, uh, and that has ended up being exploitative of people. Uh, so um, uh, certain organizations treat us as products and they, um, they acquire more information about us either through our interactions or by uh, mining other databases in, in order to increase the price uh, of us and, uh, and they understand our, our evolutionary needs and uh, um, have figured out ways to adapt ourselves. And so uh, the identity construct uh, uh, is one really important way where we can uh, sort of re-architect things uh, into a, uh, a web free context where we are participating in these uh, protocol-based open platforms and um, essentially standing up network business models that uh, uh, can organize collective behavior and deliver services and deliver products in, uh, uh, in a different way that corporations end up doing. Uh, so um, with respect to scalability, um, CryptoKitties identified uh, some needs uh, a uh, very exciting application that drew a lot of attention to our space, um, but also pointed out where in, in the different clients we needed to do work and, and where the different uh, application architectures we needed to do work. Um, and uh, I expect that many of you are aware that uh, uh, there's a tremendous amount of activity going on uh, with respect to scalability. We have uh, state channels being used by um, different applications, fun fairs, bank chain, uh, many others coming down the pipe, but Raven uh, and Plasma is a very exciting development. Um, so uh, I'm very confident that uh, uh, Ethereum will maintain its essentially orders of magnitude lead. Uh, I expect uh, an interledger world to develop, but it's developing already and the consensus are are um, embracing that, uh, even while we pay 150% um, of our attention to, uh, to Ethereum. We have a lot of attention, actually. Um, and uh, um, expect that, uh, um, that our ecosystem uh, will explore the solution space and grow very rapidly. Um, it works. So about the cusp of the sea change in how humans organize themselves for economic, social, and political activity, and 
uh, as builders, piddlers, sorry, um, you're in an ideal 